the intention of our attention. It's so big for everyone, but especially for artists and creative types like us. Um, it's the cause that produces the effect and the effect is our life. So whether you're conscious of it or not, your intention is the cause that produces the effect, which is your life. So if you are not paying attention to your intention, then your life just kind of is a bit of a hot mess. That's what I found. Um, each decision we make and action we take is born out of intention. So every thought, person, experience that we give our attention to is motivated by intention. And so at the moment when I actually started to write and try to direct my own stuff, I was still doing publicity for other people's films. I was trying to make my own films. I was asking for permission, pitching people, trying to get contacts and network and do all the things that don't matter. Because the only thing that matters is your work. And so when I finally realized that and started to make small things and try to move them around festivals and just, you know, just share my work, um, you know, the energy behind that positive intention started a ball rolling. And um, I've only been making films for five years. Um, uh, and I only quit my job full time three years ago. Um, because I was still holding on to publicity as a security blanket. Um, and so, and so, yeah, you know, I, 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 I look at, um, you know, each year that's passed and all I've tried to do is continue to make work, whether I have the money to make a film, a narrative, a doc, a commercial, a TV show, a uh, directed episode of Scandal, a, a documentary about Venus Williams, whatever I, a story I want to tell through whatever medium, short, medium, TV medium, commercial medium, full length, documentary, feature. That's something that I really le learned from Spike. Um, Lee, not Jones. I'm sure Jones is nice. But. <laughs> I was talking to a lady, she was like, Spike Jones? Is that? No, lady, Spike Lee. <laughs> um, but you know, remember he did commercials with Jordan. He, he, he's done as ma almost as many docs as he's done narratives. He's made a film every year for the past 20 years. I mean, he's really the blueprint of just not even a black filmmaker, a filmmaker who's just continued to make work. And so that's, that's how we're here now. If your dream only includes you, it's too small. If that dream is just about the thing you want to accomplish and you don't even know why you want it, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's too small. It may take your attention, but you're not really winning. You may achieve it, but you're not growing from it. You're just going from thing to thing. It may look like success from the outside, but if you don't even truly know why you're doing it, then your cause and effect will be off and you're not gonna be fully, truly living your dream. So I feel a little weird to tell you that when you win awards and the light is on you, that it's not gonna be enough, but that's what I'm telling you. And I wish someone would have told me that early. Um, if we limit our visions to those things outside of us to validate us, we're making an intentional error that might very well bring the outside thing you want, but it'll ring hollow in the end. Why? Because none of that shit really matters. Our work is a mirror, you know, a mirror of what we believe, all of our work. So what we put on screen is important, wildly important monumentally important, but the way that we go about that work is also important. Our crews, our directors, our writers, we talk about that and we keep talking about that and that's a part of the conversation that's being centered right now. And we'll keep doing it until we don't have to have the conversation anymore. But there's a part of that conversation that I don't feel we talk about hardly enough. And that is about our mirror. And for me, that includes representation and our representatives. Who speaks for us within the industry? Our lawyers, our managers, our agents, those women, humble in ranks, have a struggle within a male-dominated industry. And it is important to me to have an all-women team in the same way that a lot of people have all-men team, right? To make a point. Yeah. <clears throat> to make a point about the importance of the woman's voice in all aspects of the work we choose to do. To have women represent me to the studios and networks in my business endeavors, to align with forward thinking and like-minded women and men in my work matters to me because everything matters. Not just what's on the screen, but the way we go about putting that work on the screen. Um, the people that you choose to work with and the energy that you give to those people is vital. Uh, Oprah Winfrey and Carla Gardini at OWN, who I work with daily on my series Queen Sugar, Lisa Nishimura and Adam Del Deo and Ben Cotner at Netflix, I work with on my documentary 13th, Alan Horn and Sean Bailey and Tendo Naginda and Jessica Virtue and Jim Whitaker and Katherine Hand and the people that I work with at Disney in my heart's joy right now, Wrinkle in Time. Representation, how you're represented, how you're reflected, 
who gets to tell the story, who the story is about, what is the mirror, what, did you, what do you see when you look in, in that mirror. Those are things that I think about so much. And I want to tell our stories, stories that represent our realities and our imaginations as women, that reflects our past and our present and our glorious future. And that mirror that we're in a time right now where it's even more distorted than it's ever been, our reflection. Someone's kind of throwing a stone in the water and making ripples so that we can't even really see ourselves. That our voices are, we're being asked to silence our voices in this current day at a time when it's so integral that we center ourselves and make our voices heard. So we have to do that fully. We have to interrogate each other in every aspect of our work. We must because it all matters. We have to move forward each day with gumption and gusto, everything we can muster. You step out into this world embracing the grace of a gorgeous universe. And you take a deep breath every morning and you bring to the day everything that you can bring. And some days, for me, I bring a lot more than others. But every day I wake up and I do what my mother told me. Treat others like you like to be treated and try your very, very best. And so we do our best wherever we are. We make change in large and small ways and we do it for each other. We do it for our daughters and our mothers, our sisters, for the Marleys of the world, for the Hillarys of the world. We do it for us. Thank you, my sisters, for this honor. I appreciate it. I'm going back to work. <laughs> I'm gonna go have a, a quick bite and then I'll see y'all later. Thank you very much. I wanted to be a lawyer because of um, the injustices that I felt were in the world, injustices uh, as it relates to black and brown people, which is who I grew up with and feeling that it was wrong. And uh, so I remember uh, in the eighth grade getting a briefcase for my eighth grade graduation. Uh, and I thought, it's all happening. I got the briefcase, a few steps, and then I'll be in the courtroom. I mean, really, I was just, uh, that's what I really wanted to do. And then I wanted to be a journalist. And then I, I fell into film, and I've been here ever since. Don't be results driven, be passion driven. There's no strategy to life, no strategy to career, although many people say that there is. I think the best strategy is to be strategyless and to focus on following our passion. And that becomes its own strategy, if you will. I feel pressure only that I put on myself to try to be the best that I can be so that I can uh, be an example for those that need one. I don't think about it a whole lot. I just try to put my best foot forward every hour of every day and move forward in life with gusto and moxie and try to be as fearless as I can even when I'm going into dark places. Um, sometimes overwhelmed that people take to the things that I make in the way that they do. Um, I don't take it for granted. You know, when I first walk out on to the audience, uh, out onto the stage, um, in any place, go into a theater, I'm always surprised that there's people there gathered to see something that came out of my brain. It still kind of gets me every time. I feel grateful.